Hello all, my name is Trey and I'm with Student of the Leaf. So before we get started with things, let me go ahead and get my hat for the day. And this is actually provided by the East India Trading Company, um, Cigar Pirates Rogue. Rogue. Uh, I think this was distributed through the Gurkha line when the East India Trading Company released their Rogue uh, brand. So there we go. I think it kind of matches what I'm wearing today. <laughs> Anyway, today I'm actually smoking on the Drew Estate uh, Undercrown Suprema. So what I'm going to be talking about today is etiquette. <laughs> like that, we're talking about etiquette when it comes down to being in a cigar lounge. So most people that I know think that you just buy a cigar and you come into a cigar lounge if you want to and you sit down and you just smoke and that's it. Uh, well, yes, you can do that. And you can actually do a lot more other things too. So um, I've talked about before in the past, um, conversations are to be had inside the cigar lounge for that hour and a half to two hour and sometimes for the bigger ring gauge cigars, three hour smokes, uh, you could have somebody's attention for that amount of time. Now, obviously you're not talking for that entire amount of time. There are some breaks, there's some quiet time, it is what it is, but um, it's a conversation uh, driven culture. Deals are to be made and had um, and just talking about life and such. But there's also etiquette when you're coming into a cigar lounge. First and foremost, when you come into a cigar lounge, some cigar lounges will say you can't bring your sticks because they want you to buy inside shop. And some cigar lounges will say it's fine for you to bring in your own sticks. Now, this is my thing. If you bring in your own sticks, Probably you've had them in your humidor for a long time. Uh, you bought them offline or anything like that. That's totally fine. Bring in your sticks. But you should always patronize the store in the lounge that you go into. Always. 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 Buy one stick. Buy two sticks. Buy a box of cigars. Whatever you can afford. Patronize the place. Why are you patronizing the place? The lighting. The lighting, the lighting, the lighting. Shop owners, they have overhead expenses. Whether they own their building outright, they probably have um, some sort of, you know, mortgage, um, or they're, you know, renting the place. You have to think about, you know, what keeps the place cool. Um, if there's any amenities and stuff like that, free bottles of water, um, whatever, whatever the shop owner is doing for you you're still partaking in that. So you should always patronize the shop that you're going to. I mean, the TVs that are on, it takes electricity, it is what it is. Um, so that is number one, patronize, patronize, patronize. Another part of etiquette inside of a cigar shop is do not be a conversation hog. So in a personal communication, um, not everyone has it, you know, not everyone is the best at talking. Uh, not everybody is good at the banter going back and forth. Um, and we'll touch on banter back and forth coming up too. That is something that you can learn upon and grow upon is actually how to effectively communicate at a cigar lounge. Um, you cannot be a conversation hog. So if somebody's talking about something, engage them, talk with them. They have something on their mind. It's not all about you. It's the culture. And being in the culture, this is the point that I said I was just gonna touch back on, is having a thick skin. <laughs> uh, most cigar lounges that you go to, um, you know, hey, 
you have males and you have females who actually go into the lounges as well too but typically it is the alpha males uh, and alpha females just like in life if somebody likes you they're going to make jokes with you um you have to have some tough skin when you walk through that door everybody is going to get it nobody is spared so having a little bit of tough skin so when i was in the military I had one commander who actually uh, would use the phrase um, have feathers like a duck and let the water just roll off your back. So, you know, just let the stuff roll off your back, roll with the punches. It's all good. Um, typically, if you know somebody doesn't like you, they don't interact with you. They don't talk to you. And that's fine. That's their prerogative. No, there's more things when it comes down to etiquette. Let's think about it. Clean up your own mess. If you're inside of a shop and you make a mess, hey, it's going to happen. Clean it up. We're all adults here. We can clean up our own stuff, our own clippings. Um, the shop owners and also the workers that are there most actually do a really good job of cleaning up. Help them out. This is your lounge as well too. Help just pick up your little bit of trash cost you nothing and it doesn't take that much time clean up your mess so i hit on patronizing the shop that you're at i hit on not being a conversation hog having some thick skin cleaning up your own mess i would say also another part of etiquette would be treat others the way that you would want to be treated you know what that should be go to rule number one I mean, it's in the Bible. <laughs> um, I personally like to go one step further and I treat people better than how I would want to be treated. I treat people with respect. Um, I help them out if they need help. Um, I offer to help if they need help, reach out to me. Um, and I actually mean it. Um, if I know someone hasn't had a cigar Maybe they're fairly new into it. Um, they haven't had this particular one. They're interested, um, but they might not want to spend some money on it. Um, <laughs> what I do, and I know a lot of other people do as well, too, they'll go ahead and they'll share. It's a sharing community. So it's like, hey, here you go. Try it out. Tell me what you think about it. Um, it's a part of the culture. It's a part of the community. Um, and, you know, obviously nobody has to do any of these things that I'm talking about right now. It's my personal opinion on cigar etiquette. I think I pretty much hit all of the things I wanted to hit with etiquette. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep smoking the cigar a little bit. Yeah, the Strosse Undercrown. Undercrown is actually a really good uh, label by Drew Estate. The Feral Pigs, Flying Ferals, one of my favorites. This is more of a uh, milder cigar. Ooh, and I'm starting to hash myself. Remember the first time I started smoking cigars. Um, yeah, this is, oh my gosh, it's really flaky. Okay. Time to ash. That's one thing that cigars will let you know is when it's time to ash. So I'm glad it told me so I didn't completely ash myself. But yeah, this is definitely a uh, milder uh, stick. Definitely not heavy. Something good to start off with. And if you remember in our previous video, talked about things pairing well with it got coffee here. Non-alcoholic, it goes well. And you can probably tell what kind of coffee I have. And just to, well, you can't tell what type of coffee I have because it's in a cup, uh, but where it's from. But inside the cup, what I have is six shots of espresso with steamed heavy whipping cream filled all the way to the top. Big and bold and uh, no added sugars or anything like that. So I uh, guess it's keto friendly.
coffee and cigars, espresso and cigars, go really, really well together. So. Thank you for tuning in. I know this was a quick video. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, take care.